All right, let's get down to our focus of the day on Business Nigeria. Last year, the federal government ordered all mobile telecommunications companies in the country to list their shares on the Nigerian stock market or face sanctions. The Minister of Communications and Technology, Adebayo Shidu, issued that order as it had become imperative for them to list on NSC so as to give Nigerian citizens the opportunity to be part of the ongoing digital revolution in the telecom sector. He charged the operators to, as a matter of urgency, address the perennial problem of poor quality of service, drop calls and unsolicited short messaging service. Well, according to the federal government, uh, telecommunication companies operating in Nigeria must quickly conclude plans to get listed on NSC or face regulatory penalties uh, from their compliance failures. Well, is it all about threats? Let's put this into perspective. I have in the studio to talk more about this with me, equity research analyst, Vetiva Capital. That's Ifedayo Olooporoku. Many thanks, Ifedayo. Thank you for having uh, me. For your time. Yes. Telecoms company listing on the Nigerian Stock Exchange has been a matter of discourse for some time now. Aside the federal government calling, many investors, many uh, shareholders have also wanted them to come on board, especially the voice call uh, telecom operators. Yes, we have some of them already listed on the Nigerian stock market. But before we talk about these threats uh, coming from the federal government, let's look at the assessment of telecom companies listed already on the Nigerian stock market? Okay. Um, well, for the Nigerian Stock Exchange, it's actually, you see that the information, com the um, ICT um, sector basically is not very, very well represented. At least it's not a reflection of the Nigerian economy that we have. Uh, the major telecommunications companies are not listed on the exchange. I think at a point, Starcoms was listed on the stock exchange and right now it is not. So right now you have companies that are not directly dealing into um, telecom mobile telecommunications. So it's a very underserved, let me say, sector on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. The major sectors that we have and we always speak about are financial um, services, consumer goods and industrial goods and oil and gas. But in terms of telecommunications, ICT, um, there aren't many companies at all. So you kind of see why um, the government has begun to put this pressure on telecom companies and it's also interesting to note that it is a it is a trend that we have seen is africa based basically not just nigeria you saw you know the tanzanian government um Ghanaian as well you know they try to do it through either you know legislative um, action and it's more like a regulation you must list or it's just some kind of coercion in a certain sense that these companies must list and we have seen that trend across a number of African countries, Nigeria included, like you uh, mentioned already. So it's a trend that has been developing and you have started to see them actually list. You saw in Tanzania last year, um, you saw Vodacom actually list on the Tanzania Stock Exchange after the government had been putting a lot of pressure, pressure. and cohesion. Um, so they had to, and it was part of regulation as well. In Ghana, you see that MTN has already even opened its IPO um, really, and it was part of the requirements for the company to acquire a 4G license, really. And so you see that regulators now are trying to tie it to, in fact, if you want your operations to perform as well as it should, if you want to make these investments, then you need to also list on the um, stock exchange. Stock exchange. Um, you see, it is a two-way street, I guess. Um, first thing you would think of is, okay, maybe the, there's a reason why these telcos are not um, yet listed. Instead. Why the coercion exactly? Um, the stock exchange is still developing very much and the SEC is going a, a long way really to ensure that the listing is more attractive it's easier and companies want to but then again you have the economic performance the economy as a whole um, the companies must ensure they f the first thing they feel is oh the economy has to be thriving for us to actually list on the stock exchange so even though MTN had been you know the coalition started a few years ago you're just hearing news fillers about um, MTN actually listing um, because you know the economy is back on an uptrend and we're back from a place where we basically hit rock, rock bottom so that's the two way all right street. let's let's go global now mm -hmm. yes 
Some tele um, technology companies have been listed, like Omatech and the likes, right. at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. And if we go global, we'll see Alphabet, uh, Microsoft, uh, Facebook, all listed at the global uh, stock market there. And they are doing very fine. We saw how Apple uh, traded in a couple of weeks ago, right. just last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what's, what, what's delaying uh, Nigeria Tell from us. being like this? I would say the stock exchange is a reflection of your economy, really. And what every regulator would want, what every capital market regulator would want is for the stock exchange to reflect the economy as well. Nigeria is incomparable. In fact, we're not in the same segment. There, Honestly, those are I developed didn't want to compare, markets. really. But yeah, yeah. No, we I, just I have totally to look understand. at them. Exactly. Right. So there just definitely needs to be a more development, um, both in the, equ in the um, equity markets and in the economy as a whole. Um, sometimes you see that companies generally are averse to listing. Um, they feel like there's more pressure, there's more um, public eye. Uh, but then when the, the um, advantages are there for them to take up and for them to realize that this is a place where we can get capital and whatnot, it's a liquid market, these concerns will not be there. So I feel like there needs to be a lot more development of the exchange in itself and the company's yeah. listing would go a long way in line with the economy also performing you know better okay just before i take it because i know we were both talking about uh, data service providers and the yeah. voice call providers right. exactly but before we go that into that let's look at uh, the impact of what telecoms listing would have done on the nigerian stock exchange if they were actually listed yes we'll see mtn plans to list IHS plans to list, InterSwitch plans to list, but they've halted their decisions just because of the uh, um, um, political uncertainty in the system at the moment. But what would have been their impact, really, yeah. if they were listed on the Nigerian stock market? And at the moment, what's their volume? Those we have there, what's the volume? What's the value? And um, how has their trading been like so far? Okay. Um, so I would say f if these companies were listed there's no doubt it would be a more robust sector there would be more options for um, investors to pick from right okay. but there's also the concern that you would hear is the market big enough to absorb liquidity from four giant you know telcos, <laughs> telcos or whatnot listing on the stock exchange um and you see that mtn is going to start is trying to start its process um we do not know if they have halted um plans or whatnot but you know the latest news fillers you get is that they are in the process um of and whatnot, it would be a it, it would it would be a positive move for the um, exchange. It would make a more robust exchange. Liquidity would improve because these brands are also very global and multinational brands. MTN is present in many countries are in across Africa and even outside of Africa. Africa. It would definitely also entice foreign investors as well. Um, also, even taking MTN particularly because it's such a, I would say, household name, retail investors would definitely also be encouraged. Like, you know, they are trying to definitely build that market as well to ensure that oh, the um, subscription is from a lot of retail Nigerian, Nigerian investors and institutional Nigerian investors. So it will definitely be a more robust um, exchange, exchange, especially given where we are, where the, te the telecommunications um, sector on the exchange is less than it's about 0.2% relatively in market cap of the entire um, exchange. So if, you know, a lot of analysts have spoken, and if MTN does list, it would be maybe top three or, um, stock ex, um, stocks listed on the exchange, exchange. because of the size, its size. And then you imagine if the other um, three also followed suit as well. But it would be al also important to point out that this, you know, whilst we're talking about telecommunications sector, there's a lot of, you know, big companies as well that operate in Nigeria that are not listed on the stock exchange. But clearly there has been a lot of focus and regulatory drive for telcos in themselves to list. Um, yes, and I think another thing is there's also the side of the company. The companies also start definitely benefit from listing on the stock exchange. Somehow it can improve goodwill. Um, just the fact that, you know, you are a multinational operator in Nigeria and then you list and as a public Nigerian I am invested in your company mm. there's a certain type of you know national goodwill that it can brings, generate exactly. um, really and then it's also a capital market you can raise funds from there as well as long you know you can always raise funds from there so there's the attractive side as well so it's it's definitely an improvement it will definitely be an improvement for the stock exchange and for the companies in themselves okay 
yeah, we talked about this threat. I'm sure you, you also talked to us earlier about what uh, the threats will actually do, the sanctions will do, and what it would not do. But let's leave that aside. Uh, I want us to talk about data service providers. They are propping up more prominent now. Right. And that's the likes of what the Facebook and all of them are doing. And uh, those are the tier two that you talked about, yeah. and also the voice call, the difference. Okay. Okay. Is it a, a sort of challenge for... for Telcos. Exactly. Okay, so a lot of um, growth, a lot of growth had been in the past driven, had been driven by voice growth, meaning a lot, of, a lot more people are buying phones. They're calling. If you look at the statistics, as at 2007, we had about 41 million subscribers, mobile subscribers. Right now, latest data says that we're north of 160 million um, mobile subscribers in, wow. Ni um, in Nigeria. Nigeria. Um, I would like to point out that that data is not unique subscribers. That's basically SIMs. So if you have okay. two SIMs, basically, you, it would that data would count you as two, two subscribers. subscribers. So that okay. is not unique okay. subscribers, really. And if you think about that, it means there's even still more room to growth, given that it, our population is estimated at what 190 um, million, million. Um, people in Nigeria. So there has been a lot of growth from voice. Um, that is where telcos had been seeing growth. But definitely in line with, um, I would say, techno technological trends, in the internet and data has been a place where you know growth has begun to move to it they call it you know the new frontier for frontier. growth for telcos really and that's what it is more people are getting connected to the internet it is it, it's not just um, before you'd see that it was just on the computer now you have you actually have you have a lot mobile. going on your mobile exactly phone. and another thing that is also supporting um, mobile penetration um, internet penetration is the fact that smartphones are getting cheaper or the options of smartphones you know that you can buy are cheaper mm -hmm. um, you can see smartphones of 13,000 there about <laughs> relatively even wherever cheaper. even I want cheaper to believe, yeah. right and you know that's coming from a place where they were more expensive um, even sims were more expensive so uh, things are becoming more um, cost efficient for people to for people to be more included in the internet penetration growth so there's that there's um, smartphones be becoming more um, what's attractive and then there's the internet as well everyone using then there's also increase in data usage right now in africa in nigeria our data usage is still below where you know our peers are um you know majorly because a lot of people have not begun to use the internet okay. as as well so you see the growth coming from smartphone adoption increasing you see the growth from internet adoption increasing you see the growth from increased data usage as well so data is definitely the place where growth is coming from for telcos and then like you like you mentioned um there's a lot more tier two operators um where we are seeing internet service providers, providers actually and people are adopting them as well a lot of people go around with modems um to subscribe for internet i would not say this is a particular threat yet um for the telcos these well, are maybe in, well, <laughs> well it depends on uh, it depends i feel like for everyone it's a more convenient op option, option to have your um internet on in your phone right okay. and it's very easy but you've seen a lot of people even the, the reason why we use two sims when you, the, you do a survey most times it's either one there's variable um network quality like oh if my my this line isn't working this other I one thought. will work mm -hmm. right or you see that it's because of promotions or discounts like oh this this um, brand is doing this discount let me go so those are the major options why we use um, different sims so the point basically is that um, I do not see this becoming a threat yet M more so because growth the growth that we expect from the Nigerian market is still very, very much. much so it's like a pie that is increasing and you expect that everyone can get a piece um, but as long as there's investment infrastructure investment and you can actually create a playing ground for everyone to um, play Please. I feel like um, it is definitely a way it is definitely not going to be a threat to um, the, the voice incumbent, the incumbents and the telcos, telcos. and the voice um, revenue but no doubt data is where um, growth is going to be skewed towards mm. in Nigeria for for now all right let me allow you to take a breather okay <laughs> let's take okay. a break drink water and when we come back well let me ask you sincerely do you think uh, telecom communication companies technology companies are doing great in Nigeria okay. for them to be listed 
on okay. the Nigerian stock market. But that will be after this break. You're watching Business Nigeria. What's happening to Ecop? Is there now? Okay, okay. Yes, the guest is talking now. Okay. For some days now, we have been seeing him again going down. Okay. So I'll I'll come to him after the break before Hello. I round up with him. Ife. Well, you're doing great. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, market, now. The stock market update what is going on now. Mm, no. You should give my mic to the guest. Okay. Glad to have you back here watching Business Nigeria. Yes, we've been talking about activities of or the impact of uh, telecommunications companies listing on the Nigerian stock market. All right, right about now, let's cross over to the Nigerian stock market where Efion Gekop is standing by. Hello, Ekop. Hello, Yamisi. Good afternoon. The market closed with, uh, you know, very deep uh, negative uh, tradition, zero point. 29%. We did not expect it to dip like this, but it is because of the lowering prices and uh, investors not willing to pass, you know, with their hard earned uh, funds. Let me talk to Dele Sanusi, who saw it all through the trading tables on the floor. Dele, welcome. Thank you. Afternoon. This is four straight trading days that we've had it in red. Okay. Uh, there is no respite on the trading floor at all. Mm, yes, if you look at today trading, the, the market went down and compared to the other day, today is somewhere a little bit deeper and uh, what really responsible for that one is that the premium board went down except the, uh, the surplus, all of that one, that good cement went down, assets, false bond, wapos, you know, they just, you know, they went down and it's the one that really caused today uh, a loss to be And much. these are all big Yes, yes, you know, they belong to the premium board. So what could be responsible for that? To uh, be dragging all of them down the same You know, as we have said, that if you look at the political resources, some might be, uh, and uh, people, you know, the foreign investor and uh, people also, they want to stay a catch or fixed income security to relieve their loss. But uh, in spite of that, Stambik IBTC brought in half-year results. Yes. Appraise that for us. Now, if you look at the Stambik IBTC result for this, I mean, for the, I mean, for the quarter they brought out, they're very good. If you look at the turnover, the turnover moved from 75, uh, 97 billion to 114. 114 billion, while the profit after tax went from 24 billion to uh, 43 billion, and the dividend also increased by almost like 40 percent. Last year they pay 40 copper, but today they are paying, uh, you know, now this year they are paying one naira. What could be responsible for a bank to make that kind of uh, impressive uh, performance in an economy that everyone is crying? What is the bank? What is the source of its revenue? Uh, what is just that, that by the time we look at the, uh, you know, we can we can say that the management there maybe they have really work. I mean to reduce their expenses and to reduce, I mean to increase their profit. So that I know that the management will have work to reduce their expenses. That, that is cutting costs. Cutting costs, yes. Okay. 
Uh, let's look at uh, those companies that have uh, done well. Okay, we see airline services. Airline services, you know, took a basket of losses up to 10%. Nemeth, 9%. Let's talk about Nemeth. Nemeth is in the pharmaceutical sector. Mm. This healthcare sector in Nigeria, stocks in the healthcare sector, how do they perform? Uh, if, you look at, if you look at the, I mean, it's not that they are not really performing, but if you look at our economy, then the, the, the desire, I get what I'm saying, to get all those products, then they are, the way they source for raw material, the cost, I mean, I get what I'm saying, uh, you know, those are the things that normally determine what they are going to post as a profit at the end of the day. Dele, let's leave it there. Many yeah. thanks for coming. Thank you. My guest has been Dele Sanusi Adila with uh, Camry Securities. Yes, ECOP yes, have been talking about um, telecommunications companies listed on the Nigerian stock market. Very briefly, one word. What's the activity like in that area? We have not listed any telecoms company yet. We were expecting MCN. And from what we have seen, MCN have been postponing, you know, shifting the goalposts. What I have learned in recent uh, weeks, I think MCN has gone to the banks to ask for loans. I think the banks have given, I think, about 200 uh, billion naira loan. Then a consortium of banks. With that, that company will be able to trade. They may bust coming to this market for a very long time. And I tell you, it is not very good for our economy. Mm -hmm. we, we should not allow this foreign company yes, to yes. take us for a ride. ATN ought to cut, uh, you know, come to this market and list and take money from the stock market yes. and then make the uh, operations available for Nigerians to participate. But he's right. taking these huge funds from Nigerian banks and then he will, you know, take profit and repatriate, okay. you know, back home. That's not good enough for our own All right, um, Ekop, and let me get back to my guest in the studio. Thank you uh, for the details there. Yes, I, I saw you nodding <laughs> and, you know. No, I mean, regarding MTN, um, I think the loan that they acquired was more like a refinancing for okay. a loan that was maturing. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with their plans, plans on listing. On listing. Um, we know that they had gone forward to appoint, you know, advisors and whatnot. And, you know, they were in contact with the regulators as well in terms of the process of listing and everything that they need to do. Okay. So I don't think any <laughs> advisor... No, and no we know connection. that the NCC is very vocal mm. about this. So mm. if there's any updates on them not listening, you know, we will definitely hear it. But All right, if let me get your last word now. Okay. And very briefly at that, even if okay. it's a sentence, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> Telecommunications companies at the moment. Yes, many, inv many investors, many shareholders look at fundamentals mm -hmm. of any company. But do you think telcos are doing great even before listing? Are they doing great in Nigeria? I would say that they have been doing great, but in line with the economy and the recent recession that we saw, it definitely hit home and it hit hard on the telcos like many companies in Nigeria, yeah. especially because of exposure to foreign exchange and that, that, that definitely affected them. Right now, they are recovering in line okay. with Nigeria as well. All right, then I would leave it at that. Ifeda Yolo Poroku, thank you so much for thank your you time. Thank you for we having me. Thank you.